Hello and welcome to another soundproofing video. Today we're going to learn how to build a soundproof floating plywood floor. Before I jump in, I want to say I have a free resource for you. This is my soundproofing workshop. It's 45 minutes of in-depth teaching explaining to you exactly the design that you're going to want to have before building your soundproof studio. To check that out, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop and you can start watching it right away and start designing your studio like a professional. All right, let's jump into the video. Before we talk about building a floating floor, I'm going to give a small short disclaimer about why I think building a floating floor is not the best soundproofing method. If you can build on a concrete slab, say building a studio in your backyard like I did by having a concrete slab, or if you're starting in a garage that has a concrete slab or a basement with a concrete slab, you should definitely consider those as the best options for your soundproof home recording studio over building on a second floor or in an apartment where you're gonna have to float a floor. So with that said, I wanna say that that is what I would recommend. However, for those of you who still need a floating floor, I'm gonna teach you how to do that in this video. The main reason floating floors aren't ideal is because they still can transfer low frequency noise between the floor and whatever is below you. And likewise, whatever is below you can low frequency noises can still come up into your studio. This means like bass amps, kick drums, uh, subwoofers in your studio could still transfer below to the space underneath you. So keep that in mind as you're floating a floor, it's not perfect because it doesn't have a ton of mass. What it does accomplish is it helps decouple the floor from the rest of the structure, stopping some of the higher frequency sounds from coming through. So to start with, when you're building your floating floor, you're gonna wanna get some sort of isolation pads to put underneath the studs that are gonna actually sit and raise your floor up. So I recommend getting the isoclip studs. I have a link below. You can see them right here. They're basically these U-shaped pads that a two by four can fit in uh, vertically and just sit on top of them. You're gonna place these pads evenly in a grid pattern throughout your floor, and then you're gonna use two by fours as what are called sleeper boards that are essentially not going to be screwed into anything. They're just going to sit on the pads and sit on your floor uh, every 16 inches on center or 24 inches on center, whatever you want to do, and they're going to lift your floor up. In between all of those sleeper boards, as they're known in the soundproofing world, you are going to add low density glass fiber. Now, I recommend just using Corning 703. I probably would use the two inch thickness Corning 703 if I was doing this design and I would place it in between all the sleeper boards in my design. You can see a picture here that sh from the uh, Master Handbook of Acoustics book that shows sort of the three-dimensional layers of this design. And you can see this other picture here that shows um, a cut-through image of how this design is going to work. So you're going to place that two-inch Corning 703 in uh, fiberglass board in between all of your sleeper boards. And then what you're going to do is you're going to place a perimeter board along the entire perimeter of your room. If you look in this diagram again from the Master Handbook of Acoustics, we can see that there's a perimeter board up against the wall. You could screw this into the wall. It doesn't need to be detached from the wall. In fact, it's actually just going to act as a barrier between the wall and your floating floor. So that's going to go from the existing floor all the way to the bottom of your uh, finished floor. So once you've got all those in place, you can begin adding the plywood on top of your two by fours that you have laid out on the ISO, ISO pads. So to begin with, screw in that first layer of plywood, and then you're going to screw in the second layer of plywood on top. Just make sure that the seams are going the opposite direction so that you don't have overlapping seams where air could come through in the sound. Once you've put down your plywood and screwed it into the existing sleeper boards, then all you need to do is acoustically caulk around the perimeter of the room where the plywood and the perimeter board meet. This will seal up any possible air gaps there and make sure that it is an airtight floor so that no sound will come up through it. Then once you've finished all that, all you need to do is add your final flooring on top. This could be a laminate floor, it could be a hardwood floor, it could be an engineered hardwood floor like I did in my studio. Really the options are endless at this point, just choose something that you think will look nice or feel nice in your studio. I recommend wood if you can because I think it'll sound the best. but. 
you can do whatever you would like there. So it's not a super complex design, but it does require just a few simple steps to make sure your floor is indeed decoupled from the outside of your walls and your existing floor. Now, like I said before, if you wanna take a deeper dive into how to build a soundproof home recording studio, check out my free soundproofing workshop at soundproofyourstudio.com workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com dot com slash workshop. Thank you all so much for watching. Leave comments below if you have questions and thanks for listening. If you're listening on our podcast, I'll see you all next week. Same time, same place.